Good day, everyone. Today we are talking about section 6.5, factor x squared plus or minus bx minus c. You will notice that this section is really similar to section 6.4. The only difference from 6.4 to 6.5 is in 6.4, c was always positive. In 6.5, c will be negative. Same learning targets. I can factor a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. I can solve by factoring. The whole diamond business and what we do with it, still the same. Again, if you need to draw the one out front, or write the one out front, write the one out front. If you need to draw the rainbow, draw it. If you can do this without the one or without the rainbow, good for you. It doesn't matter either way. Again, 1 times negative 15 is negative 15. Positive 2 goes on bottom. Again, B always goes on bottom. Now, the top number is our product. How do we get a negative product? Well, we multiply one positive and one negative number together. So the question becomes, how do I multiply to get 15 that I get a sum of positive 2? Well, because we know it's one positive, one negative, we can take the sum part out of the out of it for a moment and just go, we know the number is going to have to be 2 apart. So what number multiplies to be 15? What I'm sorry, what numbers multiply to be 15 that are 2 apart from each other? And it's 5 and 3. So then the question becomes, is it 5 minus 3 or 3 minus 5 that when I add them together, their sum will be positive 2? And if you said 5 minus 3, you are correct. And so that means, again, D is my variable. 5, positive 5 was my first factor. Again, D, negative 3 is my second factor. So D plus 5, D minus 3. The next problem is very similar. Again, we have negative 15. Again, if you need to write the 1, draw the rainbow, do that. We get negative 2 on bottom. B with the sign goes on bottom. Again, because it's a negative product, I know it is 1 positive, 1 negative. So I'm looking for numbers that are multiply to be 15 and are 2 apart. Again, we know it's 5 and 3, but 5 minus 3 equals positive 2, so those aren't the, isn't the order. It must be 3 minus 5 to give us this negative 2 on bottom. So whatever this is has an influence. Because it's negative, we know that when I add them, I need to get a negative number. Again, my variable is v plus 3 and v minus 5. Again, I'm going to go through one more with you. If you think you're really good and got this, go ahead and do the remaining four. I will explain one more for everyone, and then I'll turn you loose to try your own. All right, again, diamond, if you need to draw the 1, times negative 15, b goes on bottom. Again, since it's a negative product, when I'm talking about product, I'm talking about this number on top. Now, when these numbers here, the top and bottom, are one digit apart, I'm looking at the numbers. I don't care about the signs. So 15 and 14. That is when I'm going to say I'm going to try 1. So 1 and 15. Is 1 minus 15 or 15 minus 1 equal to negative 14? And yes, 1 minus 15 is, so my variable is n, so n plus 1, n minus 15. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try the remaining three on your own. All right, so on the g problem, multiply to be negative 24, that are two apart, so you get 6 and 4. 6 minus 4 is 2, again, because it's positive 2 on bottom, so g plus 6, g minus 4. Again, if the number is not written, it's implied to be 1. So it's negative 56 and then negative 1 on bottom. So numbers that multiply to be 56 that are 1 apart. So I'm looking at 7 and 8. 7 minus 8 is negative 1. So that's why it's positive 7 and negative 8. So h plus 7, h minus 8. The last one, again, we've got negative 24. But this time, the bottom number is negative 5. So 6 and 4 don't work this time. So I need a different factor pair that multiply to be 24 that are 5 apart. 
So in this case, it's 3 and 8. 3 minus 8 gives us the negative 5, so k plus 3, k minus 8. So when we do this, we're going to talk a little bit about number theory here. And so if C is positive, which is what we saw in section 6.4, we saw that both factors have the same sign. And that sign was the same as B. So B was positive, that meant both factors were positive. And if B was negative, that meant that both factors were negative. In this section, when C was negative, That implied that we had one positive and one negative factor. Now the next part is going to go a little bit beyond what we talked about. Um, for some of you it's going to make sense. For some of you you're like, Mr. A, you just went off another track I didn't get. And if, if that's you, then don't worry about this part. But if C is negative and B is positive, what that is telling you is the larger factor is positive. And if B is negative, it's saying the larger factor is negative. And again, if you're like, I, the whole negative positive thing with the larger factor doesn't get it, but you understand that, oh, I take the numbers and go, is it 5 minus 3 or 3 minus 5 that gives me the correct B? If you understand how to do that, that's what you need to know how to do. All right, we talked about solving in section 4. It's the same concept in section 5. Factor, set equal to 0, and solve. Now, the one thing is this P problem. And this is something that comes up that people tend to forget when you get to this section, is it must equal zero. So when I have p squared minus 3p equals 10, I have to subtract that 10 from both sides first and have p squared minus 3p minus 10 equals zero. And then I can do the whole factor and solve. So I would like you to pause the video and factor and solve each of these three problems. All right, so again, we do the diamond. In this case, we have 11, which is a prime number. So anytime you have a prime number, you know it's going to be 1 and that number. So 11 and 1. And then is it 11 minus 1 or 1 minus 11 that gives us positive 10? So we have 11 minus 1. So j plus 11, j minus 1. Set both sides equal to 0. Solve, we get negative 11 and 1. So you get j equals negative 11 and 1. Again, when you are doing this, yes, you need to show the diamond. Yes, you need to show the parentheses equal to 0. And yes, you need to have your final answer. So what I'm showing here is like your minimum level of work in order to earn full credit. So on the F problem, you should get negative 6 and positive 2. Again, when you write your final answer from smallest to largest, and that is part of the reason I put the positive one on the left and the negative one on the right. When I solve them, my negative answer will be smaller than my positive. So like F plus 6, I solve it, I'm going to get a negative answer. F minus 2, I'm going to add 2 and get a positive 2. So my smaller answer will always be on the left. It just makes it easier for me for ordering. But you, like I said before, you can have them flip-flopped. You're still going to get the same two answers. So the P problem, you should get negative 2 and positive 5. All right, taking a look at the word problem. So there are several types of word problems. We're going to just kind of stick to the area ones for the moment. 
It says a contractor is building a porch of uniform width along two sides of a rectangular house that is 28 foot by 40 foot. So this side is 28, that one is 40. And so we're going to build a porch of uniform width. And so when we say two sides, we're always going to talk about two sides that are next to each other. And so here's our porch. This area right here represents our porch. And we don't know how wide it is, so I'm going to pick W for width. But you could do P for porch or just X or whatever you want. Now that I've added the porch, we now have new dimensions. So for example, this side, the long side on the bottom here, this dimension is no longer 40, but it's 40 plus that width of the porch. Likewise, this side is no longer 28, but it's 28 plus whatever that width of the porch is. When it says to write a polynomial that represents the total area, well, we know the area of a rectangle, which is what the house is with the porch, it's still a rectangle, is the width times the length. Well, the width we know to be 28 plus W, and the length is now 40 plus W. And just like we did in section one, we are going to multiply out these two binomials, area, split, stack, or foil. So go ahead, pause the video, multiply those two out. So again, when you multiply it out, I chose FOIL. You can use area split or stack if you're more comfortable with that. So you multiply them out, and again, write your answer in standard form. So we're going to bring that W squared to the front, combine our linear terms, that 28W and the 40W, to get 68W plus 1120. And the last part of it says the owners want the combined area of the porch, the house and the porch, to be 1564 square feet. Find the width of the porch. So they're telling you what A is, the combined width. So 1564 equals W squared plus 68W plus 1120. And we need to solve this. And so we go back to, in order to solve any quadratic equation, it must be equal to 0. How are we going to get it equal to 0? Subtract the 1564. So subtract that 1564 from both sides. So you're going to subtract 1564 to get it to cancel on the left. And we're going to be left with w squared plus 68w minus 444 is equal to 0. In order to solve a quadratic, we know we need to factor it. So we're going to have negative 444 positive 68. I know it's a negative product, so it's one positive, one negative. And you're like, okay, Mr. A, I, I'm, I know my times tables, but there's no 444 on there. And you're true. And sometimes you're not always going to instantly know the numbers that you're going to have to go through a thought process on how do I do this. And so when I think about it, 444 and 68 are both big numbers. 68 is a as far as B goes, that's a big number. So it's going to be one small number times one large number. So I'm just going to kind of work through a process here, and I'm going to kind of use some guess and check and move on. I know it's not going to be 1. It's not going to be 2, because if I think about it, 2 would be 222. That's not 68 apart. I'm going to skip ahead and try 4. 4 would be 111, still too far apart. 5 doesn't go into 444 because it doesn't end in 5. So my next number I'm going to try would be 6. And 6 is 6 times 74. So again, I'm taking 444 divided by 6, I get 74. That's my factor pair. Yes, there's 68 apart. So is it 6 minus 74 or 74 minus 6? Well, I need a positive answer, so it's going to be 74 minus 6. So I can go W plus 74, W minus 6. Now, about the factoring before we go ahead and finish the solving. If the bottom number was really small, like say maybe it was 10 or 8 or something like that, then I would say relative to 444, 10 would be a really small number. So then I would say the square root of 444 
which is 21 point something, and I would start from 21 and work my way towards zero going, it's going to be somewhere close to 21, 2019, 18, somewhere in that area that that factor is going to be. And so I need to look at this bottom number and kind of go, am I going to start at one and work my way up? Or am I going to start at the square root and work my way down? Yes, it's kind of a guess and check, and that kind of sucks sometimes. But when we're dealing with some of these word problems, we're going to get some weird numbers. We're going to get some big numbers. That's more about can we come up with a system than do we instantly know the numbers off the top of our head. All right, back to the solving part. So we're going to set each of these factors equal to 0. We get negative 74 equals w, and w equals 6. Now, if we think about it, what are we solving? Find the width of the porch. Can the width of the porch be negative? No. You cannot have a negative width of a porch. You cannot cut a negative board. So we would say this is not possible. This is what we call an extraneous solution, which means w equals 6. Well, what's that mean? Our porch is 6 feet wide. That's what we found. The porch is 6 feet wide. Another similar type of problem here. So I'm going to talk about the setup, and then I want you to try this on your own. So it says combined area is 16,500. So 16,500 equals, let's see. Well, they, it says this, the total area. Well, this side is x plus 80. And the other side is x plus 120. So you're going to multiply out the right side. And once you've done that, you're going to subtract the 16,500 to make it equal to zero, factor, and solve. So I'm not going to have you do all of it. What I'd like you to do is get to the zero equals part and then check back. So again, pause the video, get it to zero equals, and then check back. Hopefully, when you multiply it out, you got x squared plus 120x plus 80x plus 9,600, subtracted your 16,500, and you got to the point x squared plus 200x minus 6,900. All right, so now we're going to do the diamond. Negative 6,900, positive 200. We have a plus, we have a minus. Now, when it comes to this, you know you got the zeros on the end. What if we just said it was, you know, take a zero off, 690 and 20. So obviously it's going to go into 6900, so you got to try numbers that are bigger. Um, I'm going to try, I know 3 goes into 69 times 23, so I'm going to try 3 and you know, 30 and 230. You know, uh, you just at some point you got to pick a number and then try it, and it happens that it works. So 230 and 30, you know, if it was, you know, something where, you know, I recognized, you know, maybe I start with 50 and I tried 50. But you got to pick somewhere and start and then kind of come up with a process. What am I going to do after that? All right, so let's finish this problem out. X plus 230, X minus 30, again, equal to 0. Solve them. Here you get negative 230 equals X, which is a no-go. Here you get X equals 30. And again, what are we finding? The width of the boardwalk. So 30 feet wide is how wide the boardwalk is. All right, the last one, the community center problem, I would like you to try on your own, and we are going to talk about this one in class. So it's very similar to the setup. The only thing is you have to draw your own picture, but everything is in the problem that you need. It follows the same as the last two problems. So again, we will cover this in class. If you have any questions, make sure you ask. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone.